Hey, Donnie Smith here, and we are going to show you how to make this Jeep look like this to this. But in this video, we're going to show you the first steps we took, which is applying the primer sealer. To do this, you're going to need an air compressor, a spray gun, paint respirator, gloves, and a well-ventilated place to spray. The spray gun we're using is a Develvis Technif 1.4 and we're using the enviro base sealer it's the number for it is ECS21 it's a PPG enviro base product and I'll look for some resources and if I find them I'll put links down to, you know about the spray gun and the sealer so look down in the description I may have some information about that down there now one question I get a lot is do I have to use primer sealer and the answer is no you don't have to use it I mean, you can sand a car down with four to 600 grit, the, the, the previous paint, and you can spray straight over that old paint finish. And primer sealer is really not for corrosion protection. It's not designed to go over metal, and it doesn't really have a, you know, it's not designed to, to fill imperfections. So you may be asking yourself, why in the heck would I want to use it then? Well, it does help a little with adhesion and durability, but the main purpose of primer sealer is for hiding. It hides what's underneath it. For example, if you've got a, you worked on a car and you had a small dent and fixed it and you primed it with primer surfacer, you're probably going to have a small spot of primer surfacer on there. If that primer surface, surfacer happens to be light gray, and let's say you're painting a high metallic dark blue, well, that paint is translu translucent. You can see through it some. And you may not notice it in the booth, but when you pull that car outside, you're going to actually see what appears to be like a stain on there. But what you're actually seeing is you're seeing through that base coat and you see that primer spot. So primer sealer is used to provide the right shade underneath the paint to give you a uniform color. Okay, as you're watching him spray, just notice he's keeping nice even strokes, overlapping 50%, and just kind of watch his... Uh, his technique that he's using but we'll go ahead and talk about how to use this primer sealer now this is specific to the one we're using uh, whatever brand you're using you need to make certain that you look at their technical data sheet but on their technical data sheet it says this the sealers can be applied over unsanded OEM e-coat sanded original finishes and properly prepared and treated bare steel aluminum fiberglass and plastic but if you just kind of glance at that real quick, you'll think that this can be applied directly over metal, which, uh, you know, it's not designed for that. It, you know, on down it says, uh, says this. Aluminum, bare steel, and galvanized steel must be clean, rust-free, and abraded thoroughly. So it needs to be sanded. And these substrates must be primed with an etch primer. Now, what we do in a case like this, if we've sanded a car down, we just have some, a few spots of metal that we sanded through. Uh, we're just going to use a 1K self-etch primer that comes in a spray can. We'll just spot prime those metal areas. We'll allow it to flash for 15 minutes. Then you can come back and spray the primer sealer. Now, what flash time is, that's just the time you wait in between coats. For example, the time we have to wait for, uh, you know, from putting one coat to the next coat. Now, this Jeep's a little bit different because it doesn't have a roof and some of the parts are off, but generally you want to start at the top and kind of work down. So if it had a roof, you'd start on the roof and then work down towards the, the bottom for this downdraft booth. But in this type of work, every job's going to be a little bit different. Now, on this primer that we're using, it mixes 4 to 1 to 1. That's talking about the mixing ratio. And what that's saying is you mix 4 parts primer to 1 part catalyst to one part reducer. Now again, depending on the product you're using, uh, you'll need to look up that specific uh, technical data sheet for that product because it all may vary a little bit. Uh, it recommended a 1.4 to 1.6 fluid tip, and that's the, the size of the spray gun that you're using, how much fluid it allows to come out and atomize and all that. And it recommends 10 PSI at the air cap. Now this is confusing a lot of people because HVLP always says 10 PSI at the air cap. But we don't adjust the gun, on most guns anyway, you don't adjust them on the air cap. You adjust it at the inlet, at the inlet regulator. And this is going to depend on the gun. I mean, there's some guns, 22, you know, atomizes real well. 
Well, this gun recommends 26, and that's where it sprays pretty good at. It's 26 PSI, so when you're adjusting it at the gauge, you adjust it to 26, and that gets the 10 PSI at the fluid tip. And notice when he's spraying, he, he'll go and try to get the edges because he's got to get that inside edge there. He'll get that first, get all the edges, and then he'll come back and put a real nice, even, uniform coat on the outside surface. Spraying really isn't that hard. It just takes a little bit of practice, and you just got to keep in your mind, you know, to keep everything nice and even. Probably the hardest part about spraying that I see is, you know, you, you got a certain distance and speed, and that needs to stay consistent. Now, if you get closer, of course, you're going to have to speed up or you're going to have runs. Or if you spray a little further away, you're going to have to slow down and get the correct amount of mils, paint thickness. And another thing I want to mention is, is you notice that he's painting a lot of these off, you know, parts off of the vehicle, off the Jeep. And if you're doing that, it's not so important with the solid color, but this is going to be a tri-coat. You know, it's going to have pearl. You know, you want to set the, the panels. You want to position them the way they're going to be on the vehicle. So like this grill, you know, it sits up and down, the hood's laying flat. Because if you don't do that, you may have a little bit of difference in the way the metallic lays or the or the pearl lays, and it may give it a little bit different color effect. So make sure you kind of set them the way it's going to be on the Jeep. It recommends one to two coats of this primer sealer. Uh, we just used one. If you are using two, it says to allow to dry five to ten minutes, allow it to flash in between coats. And once you have the sealer, once you have it sprayed on there, you need to allow 15 to 30 minutes to flash off before applying your top coat. So before we apply our, uh, our base coat, we're going to let it dry 15 to 30 minutes. Now it's very important to follow those flash times. If you put too much material, material on too soon, it's going to cause a lot of problems. So don't rush those steps. This primer will provide chemical adhesion for up to 72 hours after sprayed. So during that 72 hour period, remember you need to wait the 15 to 30 minutes, but up to 72 hours you can come in and spray your base coat or whatever top coat you're using. But if you go longer than 72 hours, you're going to have to sand it to provide mechanical adhesion. So you really don't want to do that. You know, you need to time this right, schedule this right where you can, you know, do this part and you're going to be back in there, you know, within 72 hours spraying the top coat. And what we usually do, we just do it all in the same day. I mean, we will spray the, the primer sealer, we'll wait the 15 to 30 minutes, and then we'll come back and start spraying our base coat. And we've almost got the, the primer sealer sprayed on here. Uh, he's getting his hood, and uh, he's just about done. Got some few little parts that he's working on that, that he's going to spray, and we'll have this ready. You know, we'll wait that recommended flash time and be back in here spraying the base coat. And we'll be back in the next video to show you spraying the base coat. As always, I appreciate you for watching this video. If you like the video, be sure and give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. I upload a new video every Tuesday, so stop by my channel and subscribe. And click the bell to be notified as soon as the, vi as the video is available. Thanks again for watching. Take care. And we'll see you in the next video. Are you still there? Well, what year did Jeep become Chrysler? If you know, leave the answer down below.